Hey, and just like that, we are back. Welcome to 2023. How's it going? It's been a little bit. Uh, as always, Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering here at RCS. Welcome to another year of RCS Live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to cover some topics across all of our RCS products. That includes Zeta, G Selector, Acquira, Revma, RCS News, Zeta Cloud, and Really, whatever you want to cover, frankly, you know, we're here to help you. That's the idea of RCS Lives. If you're not familiar with them, our RCS Live series, what we do is, uh, as I said, every Thursday, 11 a.m., we take one of our products, talk about some tips and tricks, things you may not have known you can do, and also review some everyday workflows as well for you. So today we're going to talk about Zeta and keep it simple for 2023, back to basics, simply how to add a song inside of Zeta, making sure you know all of the subtle nuances. Because um, again, my big belief here is, how do you know how to do something if no one told you it existed in the first place, right? Uh, so we're going to cover how to add a song, some settings, stuff like that, where you can find it. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out here. I have my chat open. We're live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter Live. If I'm missing something in there, let me know. Um, hello. Great to see you too. Hello, Felicia. Uh, and uh, we always do some housekeeping. First, it's been a while, right? So let's kind of do some housekeeping. First off, how's your backups? How's your data exchanges? Are you taking those? Remember to always go and take your backups. If you have G Selector, take a data exchange. It's a cloud backup free part of your contract. And it's a good kind of way of 2023, making sure your backups are working, your backup paths are correct and all that good stuff. Of course, there's a full archive of our past videos over at rcsworks.com slash rcs-live. You can always see past videos on YouTube as well if you wanted to there. Um, and we're gonna be back on the road. We are really, really excited for this for 2023. Got some really cool things coming up. The Country Radio Seminar, Radio Days Europe, NAB, of course, uh, and so much more. There's uh, the initial list of places we'll be um, for the first half of the year for upcoming events. And we're gonna do something really special this year. We tried to do this right when COVID hit. I know, right? And we're gonna be trying to do some, you know, on-site, you know, training sessions. Pretty much just, you know, office hours, everyone you want to consider them. Um, we're here to help out. So, for example, Country Radio Seminar. Um, if you have your G Selector database or you have Zeta or you're curious, whatever, uh, we're going to have a, a, a conference room there at CRS. And you can go and schedule some time with myself. And we can essentially go and talk about whatever you want to talk about, either one-on-one, -on -one, you and your team. Just kind of, you know, hey, I wanted to reserve a half hour and ask you questions about whatever it is. So, just so you know, that's at CRS. Um, and we'll be there having a conference room. You can email me, you can email marketing at rcsworks.com, reach out on social media, and you can kind of set aside some time like Thursday at noon and let's go and talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about. So it's be really, uh, really cool about that. And of course, we have the rest of the uh, appearances there too. There's the full list there. Of course, that's always also available at rcsworks.com. Yes, Anthony, Canadian Music Week will be there as well. We're doing some sessions uh, there too. So if you want to stop on by, we're going to do some things like bring your G Selector database and just be like, hey, I'm just curious. What are your thoughts on my rotations and stuff like that? So um, definitely stop by, schedule some time. If we're on the road, we'll be helping out there too. So uh, let's see here. Yes, uh, there's, thank you for the heads up there. Uh, hashtag CRS 2023. That's March 13th to 15th in Nashville. It's now open. You can join us and all of that good stuff. And as I said, I got the chat open here as well. Um, ba -ba -bum. the wave graph. I see open. Hey, I see you, Emmanuel. There, yeah, Emmanuel. I see your note there. Let's uh, I'll poke you in one second here. Let's just see. Let's just dive right into it for right now. Um, oh, before I forget, we're also hiring as well. It's uh, it's a really exciting time here at RCS. If you're a music scheduling guru, uh, reach out to rcsworks.com, go to the uh, about us and career page. Uh, we're looking for there too. You get to work directly with me as well, which is exciting stuff. Um, I think I forgot anything else that's in there too. Um, hashtag Studio Spotlight on always. Uh, you can email marketingrcsworks.com and uh, we're hiring there. Thank you. There's the link right there. If I'm getting anything, if I'm forgetting anything, let me know. Otherwise, let's uh, dive right into it. And Manuel, hopefully this will kind of answer some of your questions here as well. So back to basics, adding a song, adding an element inside of Zeta. So I thought we'll just dive right into it and kind of talk about some of the settings as we go along, right? And so there you go. Thank you. 
Um, so for example, I have my library here on the bottom left-hand side. Again, send your photos to marketingandrcsworks.com. And so the way this works is these are essentially our default and then our custom asset types. If I go and click on songs and hit the plus, and I made this window nice and big for you so you can see it. Um, this is this song metadata, see that? And if I close this and I go to, let's say a link and I hit the plus, it's gonna show me the link metadata window. Makes sense, right? Because we're essentially in that custom asset type. We're gonna add a new element based on that asset type. And we'll go from there. So if I'm in Nate's Jingles and I hit a plus, you'll see Nate's Jingles metadata pops up. And we treat this like the metadata module. That's the best way to describe it. And it's pretty much the same across the board. There's just some differences. For example, spots. There's no need for an artist in spots. So we have sponsorships in there. But this window works the same. And so let's just first talk about the different ways you can add audio. If I jump to this extra tab right here, you can see that I can burn this audio from a CD. I can go and find it via Windows Explorer. That's just simple, just open up Windows Explorer window and you click and all that stuff. Um, the most common that I prefer is the auto load because why do the tedious uh, drag and drop, you know, find it via Windows Explorer? Why don't I just have a folder that's set up these days, especially with COVID coming out of that and being remote work and all of that? Let Zeta do the heavy lifting when we're adding elements into the system. And you'll see why in just a second. But the most basic is really a drag and drop. So I have an example over here. Now I took the deja vu from my library. I exported it from my library. And I'm just simply just a left click and drag it in. You can see a little kind of arrow there. I'm gonna click and drag and boom, just like that in Zeta. It's super, super easy, right? That's the point of Zeta. It's a modern piece of radio automation software making your life easy. And there's a lot of users, a lot of cooks in the kitchen. And the idea is that we want to make sure that it's simple for all different types of users and knowledge, right? And so a left click, drag and drop, done. That's all you need to do. And then you're looking at this, you're like, wait a second, Nate, not for nothing, but I'm seeing some marks over here already. Uh, if the left hand side, this is going to be our, our station list where the station's active or the song is active on the station. So you can see check mark means I'm allowed to play an RCS hot AC. And no, there is no way for an element to play on any station that's not allowed to play on it. And if I do want to control this space, just so you know, like this is a lot of kind of, I go like this. And once I close this and save this, this window will look just like this. So I have a nice big sine wave here. And you're like, there's a couple marks already. Like you didn't do anything, Nate. How did that happen? And that's because we have Zeta's marks analysis. It's an optional uh, setting here in Zeta, but we highly encourage you to use it. It could be asset specific to for the auto load, but essentially the idea is that we set a trim in and trim out in a segue point. So there's my trim in, that little red. And all I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm using my cursor, um, or I should say my, my scroll wheel. And I'm just going over here, right where my, what can I see that, where my cursor is? See, that's where I'm zooming in on my mouse wheel. So I'm really not doing a lot in regards to navigation. I can always use this progress bar down here. I could take this and zoom in and zoom out if I wanted to, right? make my life easier, but we really prefer you to keep it simple and use the scrolling wheel, right? And so you can see just like that, again, I'll use the progress bar here. There's my trim in, right? You notice I have a, an intro here too as well. And then I have a little trim out and a segue point. That's done automatically if you have the marks analysis enabled. And of course, the question becomes is, well, where is that? Go to configuration and system. And then from there, it's under audio processing. Now, we don't expect you to memorize this. It's kind of more you know. And you might have access to this window either because the configuration. So this might be a call to your engineer or your administrator to adjust these settings. But you can see there's the marks analysis. We can set the trim in, on, off, by the way. Trim out the segue. And we can also determine intros if we have some metadata and other aspects of there as well. And this is how a kind of combination, right? You might find yourself, I really want trim in, trim out, but I might not need the segue per se. I want to do that myself. And you can see how you can kind of customize this across the board. Uh, board. And I will say too, that there is a setting inside of the auto load. I'll show you that because we're right here anyway. Um, there is an advanced setting here that's perform marks analysis. And so a lot of times users that get national spots that have the you know, little ISCII intro code, uh, they might turn that off 
for just that specific asset type because obviously that's audio. It's going to mark that as you know actual audio. Makes sense, right? And so some users will leave that unchecked for different types of auto loads in the system. But that's where it's located there. System, auto processing, and then marks analysis. You can keep these enabled or disabled. And while we're here, just so you know, there's also audio formats. We get a lot of users who ask us, what type of audio format do you accept? Well, we accept everything over here in Zeta. So we got WAVE, MP3, uh, AAC files, and even more if you're a FLAC user or you like a higher end like Opus, something like that. What we did is one of the latest builds of Zeta. We added a custom aspect here. And what we do there is you essentially put the encoder in of any type of audio format you want. Once we find that encoder, we can then convert that audio inside of Zeta. Now, it's important to note that when we do this uh, save and we bring in a piece of audio inside of Zeta, remember I said it's a modern piece of radio automation software. What does that mean exactly? So aside from MP3, WAVE, AAC, FLAC files, custom audio formats, we can ingest those in here. You can see there's how we manage those formats, songs, spots, links, voice track, quick records, custom audio. So you might have, let's say, um, some of this might be MP3 to save storage, Others might be pure wave, right? That makes sense. We're broadcasting. We have broadcast quality. But let's say if you're a college or whatever it is, maybe you want to have like, you know, you're tight on space. You might want to adjust some of those formats. You can do that here under the audio format. And again, that is asset type specific as well. Very important to note there too, right? And so again, we can go and have the audio processing and the marks analysis. We have the default audio format. I'm going to close this. I am not going to save my changes. And this is essentially telling me that, okay, when I go and import a song into Zeta, am I going to do a marks analysis, right? Trim in, trim out, segue point. When I save this, it's going to save it as a default audio format of my choosing. Again, typically a WAV file. And then on top of all of that, we also have station-specific normalization. So now think about this for a second. If you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen, as I said before, you want to make things easy for you and your staff, left click, drag and drop, auto load configuration from multiple destinations, either an FTP or a local UNC path. Um, from there, what we can do is we can kind of say, well, there's a sense of uniformity across the board here, right? There's the sense that, okay, I might think my normalization value is negative three dB, but you might think it's zero dB. We're both not wrong here, but by adding this into Zeta, we can have an MP3, we save it as a wave. I can have as negative three dB normalization, we play it out at zero dB normalization, stuff like that. And yes, for your audio files out there, I fully understand if I take an MP2 and I ingest it inside of Zeta as a wave file, yes, we're gonna lose that cutoff sine wave. I'm not gonna create things out of nothing. I totally am aware of that, but you know the nature of the beast. Every now and then somebody sends you an MP3 low quality. What are you going to do? Tell the client that they can't send that and they can't play it? No. Nah. So, yes, I'm fully aware of that one thing. But again, the idea here is we're saving it as a default audio format. So now that we know that, I'm going to close this, hit no. I'm going to open up my Deja Vu, the same file again. Notice, by the way, that saves my format here as well. And again, let's just review some of this metadata here, right? When we add an asset inside of Zeta. Again, we've already saved it. We have a default audio uh, file that we have in the background in our content store. And now we can do all these different marks. And it's very important to note that all of the audio processing, the trim ins, trim outs, all these marks, they are non-destructive, non-destructive audio. For example, if I just click here and I reset the trim in, I am not going to affect the actual physical wave file itself. That's a really, really important factor. For example, in Zeta, we have a setting, you can bump it up to three um, uh, percentage points, right? Uh, it's like a top 40, whatever it is, and get more out of the song. And let's just say in three months, you decide, hey, you know, it doesn't really work out that well. I'm gonna bring it back down to zero. We're not going to affect the original wave file, super important to note, right? So again, let's look over here on the right-hand side. These are my marks that I have in my little audio sub tab here. Of course, we have title, we have artists. And you'll notice too, by the way, that artist, see that little box around that artist? 
that is important because what Zeta does is it saves the value um, of what's going on. So, for example, if you have, let's say, a trailing in Olivia Rodrigo, there's an extra O or something like that. Um, we're going to save the artist value. So when we go and play, for example, like an Ozzy Osbourne or whatever, we're referencing the full saved value Ozzy Osbourne. It's going to allow you to save human error, spelling mistakes and stuff like that. That's why that box is around that artist there too. Uh, nice little gotcha. Uh, to keep things, again, simple for you and your staff. Uh, I'm checking my chat here. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, Anthony, any questions? Emmanuel, any questions? Let me know. I'm here to help you guys out. Um, so, Marks, let's just kind of quickly run through these. We have the trim in. We have the fade in. We have the mix in. Um, these all have specific behaviors. Just hit F1. They'll break down for you if you want more of an uh, analysis of them, like especially things like mix in. That has very specific behavior. Uh, we have intro one, intro two, intro three. We have the early seg mark. I like doing that because that gives you the forward momentum for pre-produced or dry imaging. Uh, essentially, there is if I have, let's say, a 10-second uh, piece of imaging, and we'll say six seconds is produced, four seconds is dry, the intro time is three seconds, the sweeper will play over the three-second intro of the song because we have deemed the early seg there. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, from there, we have the Segway mark itself. That's the outro. Uh, we have a fade out. We have a trim out. We have the hook as well with a hook trim in, trim out. That's that blue outline here, that teal outline there. And we also have a loop as well. You can create a loop in here for the audition purposes. So you can go and loop that asset if you wanted to. Again, using the cursor, zoom in, zoom out. All you do is click on here. Set your mark, boom, there's my intro two, there's my intro three. Obviously, these are incorrect marks. I'm just kind of showing you for how it works. We can also go over here and move these, the numerical value up and down. There's a couple ways we can move this actual thing over. And there's scrubbing options too now in Zeta. I believe it's control and scrub, not mistaken. That's relatively brand new um, and all that stuff. Hey, RJ. Sorry, I just looked at my chat over there. How's it going, RJ? How you doing? Yes, first show of uh, 2023. Yes, it is. Um. And so, yeah, do all these marks. It's a couple ways you can do it. You can click, you can play it, do it live in real time, whatever's easier for you. You can also right-click on these values and do edit and do a manual value there if you wanted to. Some of our users do like to have their spots at $59.99, so they can just right-click on it, set that segue right to $59.99. Uh, we got some past videos here on the embedded cue points and all of that. Uh, long story short, just so you know, there's a way to essentially go here and essentially do a, we'll just do a test. These are all ways of you can embed triggers inside of your wave file. More specifically, if you overwrite the audio, you can actually lock this. So think of, I don't know, a live metadata override on your RDS. You can say when the top of the hour newscast goes, you can say like news traffic weather on the eights or whatever it is, stuff like that. And you can do that on here. That's just literally a live metadata send. You can see it's the current station. I'll just say uh, weather coming, oops, coming, there we go, coming next, something like that, right? And I can lock that in place here with this little lock pencil over here. And that way, no matter any time this audio gets overwritten, that mark is right there. And again, that's non-audio or audio triggers, which is really important to note if you have a macro or a GPIO that you have to essentially trigger something like a satellite or an audio change, an audio route change, and stuff like that. So it's a really, really, really powerful tool. And of course, if any questions on this, you know, RCS support is always here to help elaborate. There's also the F1 Dynamic Help Guide to help you out there as well, right? Uh, and that's uh, garbage over there. And so um, that is kind of the wave aspect. There's other options here for normalization and stuff like that. But for time purposes, I'm going to move a little quicker here. Um, any questions, I'm going to say get them in right now because I'm going to try to, you know, i got a couple of delay here. Um, so the extra tab, this is all about your additional metadata, right? So the playback methods, I'll cover that for a different time, but essentially play files we're caring about. We have a live read for a spot. We have a live events here. That's what that's for but we typically keep that as play file. That's nice and easy. We got our album, our target durations and all that good stuff. We got labels. This is just basic metadata across the board. 
We also have some specific metadata here on the right-hand side. Now, I am integrated my G selector. And if you remember, with Zeta and G selector, we have live integration, live logs, live assets, shared instant connectivity. So if I go and make a change here, like add this song to my system, it's automatically added over in G selector as well. And what I did in a previous RCS Live is little important information attribute here where I just kind of said, hey, this is an important value and I saved it. And that's both in G Selector in Zeta as well. If I want to jump to the station specific metadata, those are my categories. If I'm active, split behaviors here, which is also important if you have splits on your station, our restriction grid. So for example, I'm not allowed to play. It's all red versus something like I'd say at work only. I can play from nine to five, Monday through Friday. And then I have my attributes here. This attribute window on the right-hand side in the category are all shared with G Selector as well. So I personally encourage users when they're adding new songs, start with Zeta first, because obviously that's the marks, right? We need to save it, do the trim in, trim out, segue point, the marks analysis, stuff like that. And then you can either do some basic metadata here, or if it was me personally, I would jump to G Selector because that's where I'm doing the advanced scheduling techniques. Um, that's what it's there for. It's built for. But if you're looking for basic mood, energy, tempos, and stuff like that, this is such a great resource, specifically for sound code and themes here as well. You can see I can just quickly add something and call it a day if I wanted to. Super, super important there. Uh, participants, that's going to be your vocalist role. If you're a classical station, notice, by the way, we have different arranger, conductor, composers, lyricists, orchestra. Again, that is all shared with G Selector as well. This is that same value by we talked about earlier. And yes, there is a way that I can edit this if I wanted to. Uh, manage names. So let's just say for whatever reason, uh, you had a something crazy where ASAP Rocky or something like that, you didn't put the dollar sign in or you want to do some kind of difference there. There is a way to manage names here. So I can essentially edit the entire value, making sure things are there. Um, oh, and by the way, just because I just saw this, notice how there's a lot of all caps versus a, we call it Camelback, you know, up and then down, up and down. The first letter is capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. Um, there is, there are ways that we have in RCS support to kind of do a mass change to your library. Uh, sometimes there's a program director who comes in and says, I want everything caps. And then all of a sudden we get a phone call six months later and they're like, Marty, yes. My HD radio is yelling at me, telling me that this is Pitbull. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I totally get it. And they're like, hey, is there a mass way we can do that? And absolutely. We have some SQL scripts that we can run. So if you do want all caps, you want your HD radio in your car to yell at you for Alicia Keys, we can do that. Or we can do like you can see Rika Iglesias here, and we call it Camelback, right? Doop the humps of the camel, right? That's what that is. Um, and of course, so just right clicking on this manage names, that's how I'm fixing that here. And from the drop down, tons of lists in regards to what your format could be. G selector integration. We have the history here as well. I don't know if it's going to pull anything up here on the song. Oh, great. So you can see a couple of little spins here as well. Don't judge my demo database for the back to back hours. And then finally, the script on this side. This is going to be, and I have some album artwork here, but this could be wherever you want it to be, right? And the idea there is it's just essentially a script page where you can go and say live writing or whatever it is. Like if it's a spot, a live read, you can put the live read in there. Um, it will respect Wikipedia stuff, not mistaken. So you can copy and paste uh, stuff like that. So if you want a full artist notes on a song, whatever it is, you can copy and paste it there as well if you wanted to, right? So really cool stuff. Oh, and by the way, see that hourglass? You might've noticed that that appeared randomly. Um, it's not random, I should say it's because I did the hour restrictions. So at work only, that's telling me that this particular element has an hour restriction. And oh yeah, by the way, 2023, back to basics. If you have any questions on something, why it didn't air, hover over it. It's gonna tell you exactly what it didn't air. Now it's a, I know it's a little small on my screen, but hour restriction at work only, that's what it was saying there. So if I, if I remove it, hit none, you'll see that little hourglass will disappear there, right? Last call for questions here. We'll do a summarization of what we did so far. So we're adding songs, adding elements inside of Zeta. Choose your asset type. Hit the plus or respect that asset type. You can do a drag and drop. Super easy. You can do an auto load. Highly encourage you to do that. 
You can uh, burn it from a CD. You can find Windows Explorer, all those different options, whatever is easier for you. We can save your asset as a default audio format, typically a WAV file. We can ingest MP2, MP3, WAV, AAC, FLAC files, or other custom asset formats, like let's say uh, Opus, something like that. And then, of course, we do a marks analysis, either automatically uh, of your choosing. That's a trim in, trim out, and or segue point. Um, and then we have station-specific normalization on top of all that, which is really, really cool because we have a lot of cooks in the kitchen. It makes things nice and streamlined. Right, RJ? Right, Emmanuel? So um, I saw your... Emmanuel, I might poke you on YouTube here. I saw your comment on there. It might be a little more you specific um, but I will poke you on YouTube and check and see over there, just so you know. Um, and uh, super last call for questions here. Just a reminder, don't forget, we'll be back on the road for 2023. These are the upcoming events we have so far at a CRS, the Country Radio Seminar. We're doing some office hours. Bring your database. Let's talk some shop. And we'll, um, we'll be there hanging out in the Gibson room upstairs of the Omni over there. And uh, I know that I think it was, who said, I want to make sure I give you proper kudos there. Anthony, yes, we'll be at Canadian Music Week as well, doing something similar too. So if you want to schedule some time with us, let us know. We're here to, to help out too. Um, <laughs> hey, Dawn, I think I got emails from you, Dawn, right? Yes, the RCS Academy. Um, I believe I have some, uh, some emails to answer from you. I did see that. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thanks for checking in as well. Um, and Trevor checking as well. Yes, that custom cue point to send metadata is really, really cool. And I know that I always go to the to the live metadata because that's the easiest to show. But remember, in Zeta, like for example, hotkeys, we have both audio and non-audio triggers, right? So especially now, we're all wearing many hats. We're all in the studio, but we're not in the studio. Some of us have markets that we have to worry about that are an hour away. Start getting creative with Zeta and Zeta to go. Use these embedded cue points, lock them in certain places. Remember, even if I'm overriding the audio, I'm still going to lock that cue point based on that marker there. So it's a really helpful tool and you can get creative. Uh, I got to give kudos to Jeff. He always jokes around. He says, if you wanted to put in at a morning show at some kind of like, hey, the morning show is coming live in 15 minutes, you can embed a non audio trigger that's a GPO that turns on a coffee machine if you wanted to. That's his, <laughs> that is Jeff's go to, which is always funny. If you want to do that, to each their own, definitely do that. But I want to make sure uh, you knew that custom um, cue point isn't there. It's really, really cool stuff. So thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, RJ, for checking in, everybody else too, as well. Uh, we got a huge list of upcoming events here uh, for RCS Lives. Got some really great stuff lined up for you in 2023. And as I said, we'll be on the road as well. Uh, bring your database. Let's talk shop and have some fun uh, in this upcoming year. So thank you so much for checking us out. I will see you next Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Of course, on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter Live, all that good stuff. Don't forget the archive over at rcsworks.com slash rcs-live. I'll see you next Thursday.